So for additional guidance, see notice 2008-25 on page 484 of Internal Revenue Bulletin 2008-9. It's available on the IRS website, of course. Qualified uh, cellulistic biomass ethanol plant property, qualified cellulistic biofuel plant property, and qualified second generation biofuel plant property. Now, obviously, we know that the that the government is is uh, has this environmental thing that they are are doing, trying to subsidize and whatnot areas that are in environmental uh, that that they see as favorable with regards to environmental regulations. I still think that the laws that they put in place are probably very clunky and actually misallocating our resources instead of incentivizing us to to find to innovate our ways out of it out of things. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we're going to solve these problems by using the old technology and then forcing ourselves to pay for it, uh, the old technology that's not, uh, not a market benefit. We'd be better spending our money on research to find things that will drive us forward because we've innovated our way out. But we have, that's what it is, right? So if and any year after uh, the year you claim the special depreciation allowance for any qualified cellulosic biomass ethanol plant property, qualified cellulosic bio, I know I'm, sell, I'm saying this wrong, I apologize, biofuel plant property or qualified second generation biofuel plant property, the property ceases to be qualified cellulosic biomass ethanol plant property qualified so and so on and so forth you may have to recapture as ordinary income so again this is kind of interesting situation if you look into this stuff with the plant fuel and things like that and whether or not it's going to be more beneficial to the environment than than drilling for like oil and whatnot it's tough to tell because you have to glue you have to grow the plants and then you have to use the plants not for food but for the fuel and then you have to produce the fuel from the plants which of course takes energy and and whatnot so so again it seems like it seems like a piece of the puzzle that could work in certain areas but it doesn't seem like that's going to thing that just subsidizing that doesn't seem to anyways that's a different topic recapture of allowance for qualified recovery assistance property so if in any year after year that you claim special depreciation allowance for qualified recovery assistance property, the property ceases to be used in the in the uh, Kansas disaster area. You may have to recapture as ordinary income the excess benefit you receive from claiming the special depreciation allowance. So once again, this is kind of a special type of situation. It was qualified property. Now it's no longer qualified property. You got this big depreciation. A benefit up front, which you might have to recapture in that situation. For additional guidance, see notice 2008-67 on page 307 of Internal Revenue Bulletin 2008-32. It's available on the IRS website. Recapture of allowance for qualified disaster assistance property if in any year after the year you claim special depreciation allowance for qualified disaster assistance property, the property ceases to be used in the applicable disaster area, you may have to recapture as ordinary income the excess benefit you received from claiming the special depreciation allowance. Similar concept applied here. The property was one type of property. It's supposed to be benefiting multiple years into the future. You got this massive upfront depreciation because you're using it in this area and then you cease to use it in that area even though it's a long-term property and we let you depreciate it all and expensing it up front, so you might have to recapture some of the depreciation.